Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Today, our special guest is James Grant. He's a founder of Georgia Trial Attorneys at Kirchner, Kirchen and Grant LLC. James, James is a premier personal injury lawyer representing injured victims throughout the Southeast, predominantly Georgia. James and his partner started their law firm, Georgia Trial Attorneys at Kirchner and Grant with zero clients, no plan, no business experience. What a way to go. What a way to get started. We're going to chance to hear that story shortly. They faked it until they made it, and they learned what it takes to run a successful law firm and what doesn't. James and his partner now run a highly successful law firm and have over 21 staff working for them, including six additional attorneys. The team have helped thousands of families across the Southeast recover physically and financially to the tune of millions upon millions of dollars each year. James has insight to share with, a lawyer, with any lawyers or aspiring lawyers, entrepreneurs, and business owners, and anyone who might find themselves in an accident one day and not know what to do. In addition to running his own successful law firms, James also is seen as an expert in his field and is called upon to help in personal injury cases for other law firms when litigation is needed to come to fair settlement with insurance companies. He also helps other law firms to build successful businesses by offering coaching from his firsthand experience. James has insight to share for any lawyers who are aspiring lawyers, as we said before, and not business owners who want to know how to get their business off the ground or how to deal with an accident within their business and not know exactly what to do. With that said, let's hear more from James. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rich. I'm super excited about being on the podcast today. Thanks for having me. And we're going to have some fun today. We're, I think we're going to have some fun today. You seem like a fun guy, so I'm looking forward to it. I mean, if the shirt the... doesn't tell it, I don't know what does. I know, you know, that's very optimistic thinking, you know, in February here, you should be in Hawaii. There you go. For those who can't I mean, see. You, you, you got to manifest things one way or the other. I mean, if, right. if you want to be in Hawaii, I got to dress like I want to be in Hawaii. You know, I get it. And for our listeners, he's wearing a beautiful Hawaiian shirt. So uh, as I'm sitting in Chicago with a freezing rain. So there we go. Mm. Here we go. So James. Uh, everybody wants to hear the story of a founder, good, bad, and different. Was it voluntary? Did, were you forced into this? Were you kicked out of the house? Had to go start a business? Obviously, you started on a shoestring. So tell us the story. How did you start your, what caused you to go into business? Why did you do it? Was it easy, hard, and some of the story behind it? Yeah, I mean, and to answer all of your questions, I'm probably going to answer yes to every single one of them, because at some <laughs> part of the story, I said yes to all of those things. Um, but to go way back, I was... I was actually an engineering student. I went to Georgia Tech and I was a civil engineering student. And now I own a personal injury law firm. So those two don't really make sense for most people. So there's always questions of what's the story? How did this happen? How'd you get there? And some some of it is just it just happened. It just kind of worked out. It just kind of was, you know, little whims that I uh, jumped on because I thought that I was going to go into engineering. But then I realized that, well, there's this legal component to engineering. And wouldn't it be cool if I like put the two together and maybe one day worked for like EPA or something like that? You know, the idealist <laughs> that, that I was. So I, I applied. I got accepted. I went to law school, got through law school, graduated past the bar. It's like, OK, well, now you need to get a job. But all those other things didn't really seem too exciting. Like I didn't want necessarily an office job where I was just sitting at a desk. I, I had an internship when I was in law school and I got the opportunity to practice in the courtroom and try a few cases. And that is so much fun because it's a performance. It's acting, it's sales. It's, you know, it's all the things that really a lot of business owners need to know how to do. And I was like, wow, this is, this is fun. So this is what I want to do. So I started working for um, a local, as a prosecutor for one of the local counties here in Georgia when I moved back from law school, got a whole bunch of experience, then jumped into private practice. And very shortly after getting into the you know private practice world, I realized that there's a lot of people that do things a lot of different ways. And sometimes you just feel and see and know that you can do things better in a better way. 
And my business partner and I, we met each other at the firm that we were working at. We started within two weeks of each other. And like three months in, we both kind of looked at each other and we're like, we can really do this better ourselves. Now, it's worked out, but looking back at what we thought a business was, was the exact wrong thing because we were so focused on production. We were focused on you know how to get the work done. And we saw a better way of getting the work done and accomplishing the task. But that's only a very small portion of what owning and running a business is. But you know we figured it out. We made a plan. We kind of had our backs against the wall because we had no clients, no referral sources. We had nothing. So we had to you know churn out the process to then get the cases, to then work the cases, to close the cases, and then rinse and repeat. And we found a system that works. And we, you know, we started coaching recently within the past several years. And that's just catapulted us to a next level. Okay. So you, you really bootstrapped. I love those stories because there's nothing like being hungry to go good business. But I'm thinking, how does a personal injury attorney starting brand new go get a customer? Are you hang out in the street, how you hang out in the corner. So something happens. And you, what do you do? How do you get business? Well, and I mean, you know, every, everybody has to decide when they start a business, they have to say, you know, what's your unique value proposition? How are you going to differentiate yourself? Because, you know, there's a lot of people that do what I do. There's a lot of people that do what other businesses do. So it's not like there's, you know, again, going back to the, the old days where, you know, you went to the one or two attorneys that were in your county and that was, you know, your your little network. It's not that way anymore. You know, choice is abundant. Google is a wonderful thing. So you have to be able to say, all right, you know, this is how I'm going to set myself apart. And we had built some relationships with other attorneys and other law firms before we left. And we're, we were still able to maintain those relationships when we started our business and really show that this is what we delivered for you guys in the past. This is what we can deliver for you now with our system and our way. And that's really what we were able to get ourselves started and to then build the marketing and sales machine that you need to feed a growing business. Not to give away your secret sauce, but I'm, help me help our listeners understand what a differentiator in personal injury is. I mean, what it would look like. So if they were looking for somebody, you know, uh, in an area that generally speak, people use personal injury attorneys when something happens in their life. So they're not, they're not necessarily prepared for those calls or that shopping for a service. What's uh, what's a key, one, of, one of your key differentiators? Yeah, so... I will try to explain this as best I can, because I know a lot of the viewers and listeners aren't necessarily in the personal injury field, nor do they really want to go there because ain't nobody got time for an accident. It's just not something you want to have to deal with. So hopefully this conversation, as far as vetting and hiring a personal injury attorney is meaningless to most of you because no one wants to have to go through that. Um, but when it came to that, you know, we were in the personal injury field. Within the personal injury field, there are a vast number of options and different subgroups that attorneys can practice in. So Mark and I realized that as we were starting this firm, you know, we have to kind of narrow and narrow and narrow because we were first lawyers, then we were lawyers that practice personal injury. Well, then we have to narrow even further. And when a personal injury case starts, you know, there's a lot of options that you have for attorneys and the attorney is going to help you get into treatment to see the doctors that you need to be, you know, the quarterback to make sure that you, you get this referral and this referral and see this doctor and get the treatment that you need to get better because that's obviously priority number one. They're going to help you with your car to make sure whether your car is totaled or whether your car is repairable, that we're able to get that process streamlined so that you can get back to driving, get back to going to work, and you don't have to mess with all the rental car stuff. Mm -hmm. During that time, we're collecting all your records, all your bills, all of the things that we need to make the initial demand to the insurance company. And for the vast majority of law firms that are out there, most law firms are able to settle cases with that initial demand letter and that initial set and round of negotiation. And we call that pre-litigation because you have a pre-litigation settlement because the next phase is litigation, meaning you need to file a lawsuit. You know, the insurance company is either denying the claim, they're undervaluing the claim, they have some dispute about some part of the claim, but you, you're just not getting anywhere to resolve it. So the next step in that process is litigation. Well. My business partner and I, we realized that 
a lot of people want to be in that first stage of pre-litigation because for personal injury attorneys, generally the margins from a business perspective are very, very high. So you like a high margin business. The litigation work, it's, it's a lower margin business because you have to bring in higher skilled staff. You have more processes. You have more procedures. You have more expenses, more cost. It's a, it's a lower margin business. And it's different teams. That's kind of, you know, the example I use is it's football and baseball. They're both, they both can be professional sports, but they aren't the same skill set. You know, a mm-hmm. baseball team can't play a football team and a football team can't play a baseball team, even though they're both sets of professionals. Same thing with this distinction between pre-litigation and litigation. You can't really use your pre-litigation team to manage a litigation case and vice versa. So with that, we realized that, well, Everybody wants to be in pre-litigation. Why don't we go to litigation? And that's really where we've specialized is we help other personal injury law firms make more money faster and with less stress by serving as their outsourced litigation department. So we're the ones that they call on to finish the case, to really hold the insurance companies accountable when they don't do the right thing and pay the claim as they should in the beginning. So that's really how we've set our you know, unique value proposition by offering a service on effectively a B2B basis to other law firms to really help them maximize the value of their cases to then dump more money into their marketing machine to then get more of those pre-litigation cases. And then together, both firms, my firm, and those firms can grow. Their clients are going to get really great service. And it's just going to, you know, really lift up the legal industry in whatever geographic area we're in. So, that's that's our unique value proposition doesn't necessarily answer the difference between us and a pre-litigation attorney but we're not necessarily a pre-litigation law firm because my so so consumers generally wouldn't ha- our first call is to pre-litigation attorneys we're not looking right out of gates to litigation attorneys so we would go to your your clients and then they refer business to you correct and and that's one of our 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 second unique value proposition so to speak is if i'm in the business of helping other law firms i can't also compete with them mm-hmm. and i i think that's something that's true across business because there are many different b2b business models that say that they're in the business of helping people in other firms but at the same time, they're also going to compete with them as well. That's one thing we don't do. You know, we make a commitment to our referral partners. Hey, if we're going to help you, we're not then going to take profits from cases that you gave us effectively and then spend it in Google ads or digital marketing or radio or billboards or any number of things to then try to get those same cases that you're going after. It's just not a genuine thing because I'm not genuinely helping you. I'm competing against you. If I want to help you, I'm not going to compete with you. So that's kind of how we've also tried to set ourselves apart in that role as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, you did, you know, you did a great market study to figure out which, you know, where to play. You're going to be in a baseball team, football team, and you picked and picked your niche, but that's actually a business discipline to figure out where, where to play best. I want to take you back a little bit in history. Uh, Cause you did start off on a shoestring and yet you, and you made it. But knowing what you know today, if you were starting all over, what would you have done differently? First thing I would have done before I even, you know, signed the incorporation documents would have been to hire a business coach. We yeah. don't know. We don't know business. Like most people do not know business. In my profession, no one knows business. Like lawyers, we are terrible business people because we go to school to learn how to think and be a lawyer. You don't learn how to be a business person that just so happens to practice law. So, I mean, for everybody that's out there that's considering, you know, launching into an entrepreneurial journey, hire a business coach first and foremost, because they can help you learn and see things that no book will help you do and just give you that perspective. And also, someone to call on and to, you know, get feedback from and sometimes see the forest for the trees and sometimes see the trees for the forest to help you make strategic entrepreneurial minded decisions. Yeah. Great advice. I like it. On the flip side, you did some good things. You built a nice firm, you know, and so you made some right decisions. Uh, What would be one or two key decisions to help catapult your success? It's very scary, very scary to think about this, but especially in the beginning, Cheap is expensive. 
especially when you're talking about staff and that those first few hires, you know, so many of us think of, well, you know, I don't have all this money and I don't have a year's worth of salary saved up. So how can I pay this person? Well, if you cheap on the hire and you're not getting a professional, but you're hiring an amateur, you're going to get amateur results. You want to hire a professional. And if you hire a professional, they're going to generate income for you. They're, they're not just going to be somebody that's taking away menial tasks. If you're hiring a true professional, they should be an income producing unit of your business. So that way your business grows. And that way you're not the only income producing unit in the business. Yeah, yeah, good. So uh, you obviously followed your own uh, learning there and must have made some really good hires right from the beginning. Okay, so it's 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 up and down. Uh, business is a learning experience. We've we've made some wonderful hires and we've made some terrible hires. And it's sometimes you have to fail yourself to learn these experiences. And unfortunately, we did that ourselves on more than one occasion. Yeah, I've hired my fair share of people over, over my career, and I've been fooled many times and surprised many times too, in a good way. All right, let's take a commercial break. Who is uh, interesting because you know, I learned a little bit before this commercial break, but I want you to have your opportunity anyhow, because I understand you're taking some of your skill set and bring it over to the business side. But who are your customers? Let's promote your business. So our listeners, if they could use your services, uh, maybe heaven forbid it, they're in an accident, but or maybe there's some other skills that you're offering or services you're offering. Take this time, promote your business, promote with uh, uh, how you can be of service to our listeners. Yeah. And so, as I said, my role is to help other personal injury lawyers in Georgia right now. We've got some plans for the future, especially in the Southeast, but at least for this year, I'm looking for other personal injury law firms that are in Georgia where I can help them to make more money faster and with less stress by serving as their outsourced litigation department. So if you happen to be a personal injury attorney and you're really good at that hustle market sell, you've got a, a marketing machine, you've got a referral machine, you are able to get business. If you're good at that, you need to stay good at that. You don't need to try to do something new, do something novel, do something that you're not necessarily good at let me help you, again, make that more money to then feed your machine, to grow your business. So that way you're only managing one team and I'm managing the other team and we're going to be able to grow together. So if you happen to be that attorney, if you happen to know that attorney, have them call, call me. Our phone number, it's really easy, 833-4-THE-WIN. That's also our URL. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, let's shift gears. Uh, you uh, were not, um, you didn't escape the 2022 heading into 2023 crazy market, labor issues, inflation, interest rates, wars, political unrest. Uh, who, we got it all in one year, and I think we got the hangover of it carrying into this year, too. So you have to navigate your company as a CEO, founder. You know, you got to keep that company on the straight and narrow. And you also have to navigate yourself. You know, you got to get up in bed and up out of bed Monday morning and you got to get disciplined and lead the charge. So tell us some of the strategies you do, some of your thinking. Is uh, Are you thinking about growing your firm, expanding? Do you think it's a time to do that? Do you, or do you want to retreat, uh, maybe hunker down a little bit? What are your thoughts? So first things first is you have to adopt that entrepreneurial mindset. And it's not something that just comes by happenstance. It's something that you have to invest time into, whether it's books, workshops, conferences, coaches, a combination of all of those things. But you have to turn into the entrepreneur that you want to be. And it's not something that's easy. It's not something that just happens. It takes a whole lot of work. And it really starts with you know having a basic routine. The, the easiest thing I can say for anyone that's looking to do this is you got to get up early. You have to get up, you know, whatever you normally get up, get up two hours early. If you normally get up at seven, get up at five, spend some time working out, you know, whether it's in your basement, like I have, I've got a whole home gym set up, or if it's at a gym close by, or if it's just running or some sort of physical activity, get your body moving, drink some water, eat the breakfast that you want your highest and most productive employee eat that that breakfast what you think that they should be eating you should be doing that yourself you should spend some time you know meditating whether whether you're spiritual whether you're spiritually minded whatever your your 
you know, focus is on a religious scale, you need to take some time to meditate, to think, to pray, to center yourself before you just launch into your day. Because so many people just wake up and it's straight into the problems. If you take that time to work on yourself and give yourself that, you know, that little bit of peace for those several hours, when seven o'clock rolls around or whatever time you normally hit, you're going to be in a much better place to then make those decisions because you're going to be awake. You're going to be alert. You're going to be refreshed. You're going to be full. Like everything's going to be set to start from a really great place as opposed to, you know, throwing the covers off as fast as possible and running to get a shower and rushing and rushing and rushing. You've, you've got a pace where you're ramping up as opposed to just all the craziness that so many of us do. That's, that's at least the first thing that I would say. Um, I don't know if you have anything on that or if you want me to just launch into the next one. Go ahead. Keep going. You're on a roll here. Uh, I think I got I to gotta eat whatever you eat for breakfast. You got a lot of energy here, man. I, I mean, I, I eat a lot. I'm also, <laughs> I can't work out without a goal. Um, and I think a lot of people fall into that as well. My, my goal that I had when I started working out seriously, you know, about a year and a half ago was I wanted to compete in a strongman competition. I don't know why I picked that. That's just what I picked. So I, I had to put in the work because it took a lot to get there. I competed in my first strongman competition in October of last year, and I've got my next one in a week and a half. So, you know, it's so that is that a weightlifting? Is that what that is? So it there's a weightlifting component, but it's not just what you think of of normal weightlifting. It's, you know, the guys that you've seen on TV that are picking up the cars and the the concrete balls and flipping the tires and you know, all the the crazy heavy weights and heavy objects. That's that's what I do. <laughs> Well, you're right for a personal injury attorney. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, if 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 I hurt myself, I definitely know plenty of doctors. That I think you know plenty that's, of doctors. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but no, to answer one of your questions about you know whether you should be growing or retracting or hunkering down, mm -hmm. I I think it starts with perspective of of where we are from a global economy standpoint. When, when you look at like the global economy, even the U.S. economy, we're talking trillions of dollars at stake every year. You're telling me that every business owner can't make two, three million dollars a year out of all of that. I mean, that, that, that's that's crazy. The market share is unbelievable. There's no reason that every entrepreneur out there shouldn't be able to make several million dollars gross revenue for their business just at, at, an, at an absolute baseline because it's there. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But it's there. If you build the system, if you build the process and the procedure and you, you run your business like a business and not a hobby, you are going to have success. The only question is, is again, going back to what I said earlier about you know hiring do you want to be a professional or do you want to be an amateur? You know, do you want to be a true business owner or do you want to have a hobby? If you want to have a hobby where everything revolves around you and you are the source of all things of sales, marketing, production, financial controls, development, people, and all that, well, then you have a hobby. And if that's where you get your, your love, self-esteem, and personal well-being from, then, then great, that's fine. Just know the chances of you probably being a very successful entrepreneur are low because you can't do it alone. Whereas if you want to build that system like Amazon or Tesla, you're going to have to be that visionary and that entrepreneur, not necessarily the person that's down in the weeds doing the work, but the person leading the company into the future. So I think everybody should be massing, mashing the gas on their business. I don't think that's a, it's a time to wait because we're gobbling up market shares of other people that are slowing down. If you're slowing down, there's somebody that's right behind you. They're going to steal your market share. So there's no reason why you can't grow 30, 50, 100, 200, 500% year after year. Yeah, great. Is your industry affected by words like recession or essential? Uh, the, the new word essential is for businesses. Or are you pretty much weather all storms? Yes and no. Uh, when, when COVID hit and shut things down, there were a number of law firms and especially personal injury law firms that just closed the doors and just gave up because things were shut down where my law firm grew 100%. So, you know, it just depends on who who's behind the wheel. 
who's steering the ship? You know, is it someone that just is going to let circumstances dictate or to say, hey, every obstacle is an opportunity. And now just the question is, how am I going to make the most of this opportunity that's before me? Yeah, yeah, great. I love it. I love the attitude. I love the inspiration. And uh, you're right. You know, if you want to slow down, there's someone right there behind you, but be willing to take your customers from you. So you gotta pick a pick a lane or pick a team you want to be on football or baseball. Some great thoughts, some great analogies. James, how can people get a hold of you? I know you mentioned your number earlier, but go say it again. What's the best way to get a hold of you if they would like to utilize your services or want to refer business to you? So yeah, our phone number, it's 833 for the win, but the best place is really just to plug that in a browser. Just pull up, you know, your, whatever your favorite internet browser is, put in 833forthewin.com. That'll take you to our website. We're really big on our attorney partners and helping them grow. So if you're a personal injury attorney that's out there, we give away a lot of our template complaints, examples, documents. So that way that you can see the work product that we use. You may not be able to use it the same way that we do, but you can at least see the documents and the type of things that we offer and, and use, which again, gets back to that whole a rising tide raises all ships and if that's something that you like, just imagine what it's like when you work with me. I have a naive question to ask you. This is my own naivete. Do corporations have personal injury attorneys and in, on their uh, speed dial on the other side of the coin to help defend against injury claims? A little bit, yes and no. It's going to depend. Um, some companies, yes, because they are what's called self-insured. They have a pool of money, which is effectively their operating account or a separate escrow account that they fund claims out of. Large corporations a lot of times have that because that's easier for them to manage and they have in-house attorneys that they're able to use for the claims process. But by and large, most companies just go through the insurance model, You know, whether it's any of the major insurance carriers that are out there and a lot of the smaller ones, you know, they offer business insurance. You know, if you own a fleet of vehicles, that vehicle gets in an accident, you're going to go to the insurance company and the insurance company steers the ship. They're the ones that are going to, you know, handle all the claims. If the case goes to litigation, they're going to hire an attorney and whatever happens, the insurance company's paying the bill, but it just looks like the parties are suing one another, but the insurance company is kind of like that puppet master in the background. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes most sense. Well, James, thanks again for your time, taking time out of your busy day to share your wisdom. I, lo I love the your, your thoughts on being a good leader. I love it it's even for yourself to get you out of bed on Monday morning, eat right. I love it. I love your answer. Whatever you want your best employee to eat, you should eat yourself. Yep. Great, great advice. Great leadership advice. Uh, the, the notes, um, this, excuse me, the, everything from this podcast will be in the notes. So anything, your number and everything that we mentioned before, all be captured in the notes of the podcast, which will be aired on all podcast platforms in about two, three weeks, and also on our YouTube channel as well. With that, on behalf of our listeners, thank you for your day. Thank you, sir. Uh, I wish you the best. Rich LeBron here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show, include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.